wreck. Cormac Young Munster wasn't always here in this fine ground. No, John, they originated across the road in what is now known as the Catholic Institute Athletic Club. In those days, conditions were rather primitive and players had to wash by the side of a stream. But there are some who would argue that in those days, people put more effort into their game and certainly into their training. Well, uh, where does the membership come from? Is it all local? The membership comes, Young Munster would be a mainly local club, yes, indeed. They now have one or two slightly outsiders and that they're from Nina and such places, but generally they would be from the heart of Limerick City. And who would have been, uh, say, the great characters from Young Munster? Obviously, Tom Clifford is one. Yes, indeed, John. Tom was, I suppose, arguably Ireland's greatest character and also one of the finest ever rugby players. There's not a, a much higher honour that you can pay a member than to call your ground after him. No, indeed, that surely is the, is, 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 is the greatest tribute that can be paid and well deserved too, indeed, because Tom was in many ways for years young monster. At a time when the club wasn't too well known outside of Limerick, Tom was the man who kept it to the forefront. Clubs like Young Munster are an important part of the local community and visiting teams know that they're taking on not just the 15 players, but a tradition. Is that what makes it so hard for those teams to win? Very hard to say. I mean, funny, you know, as it happens, we're playing St. Mary's today and they have yet to win in Limerick. Now, whether it's a psychological situation or whether it's the fact that when a visiting Dublin team comes, we raise our game and tend to, to overcome them each time. But uh, certainly it does have a special atmosphere all of its own on the day of a, a visiting Dublin side and I think it raises both the expectations of the crowd and the team I think perform accordingly. What about the physical thing Jerry? People say you know in Limerick you're going to get hurt it's a dangerous place to play rugby. No I totally refute that obviously I mean we play a very hard tough game and uh, we give it we play it hard and we accept we accept the teams that we're playing against to play exactly the same way and uh, you know it is a very tough physical game and sometimes certainly injuries will occur but Never designedly. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a tough game. We play it tough, we play it hard. And, uh, you know, you will get injuries, unfortunately. But certainly, we go out to play it and to win the game, obviously. Does it bother you um, that you have this reputation for being tough? It does, of course. I mean, you know, it can go over the top at times. And, uh, of course, it bothers us. I mean, we're trying to attract players and, and young kids in to play rugby. And, you know, we, we, we play an awful lot of matches every year. And, unfortunately, maybe one incident might highlight and tarnish a very good season for us. And it just tends to, to highlight an image that, that we're, we're trying to, to be rid of naturally enough. And we play some very, a very good brand of football right down through all the ages, from under 10s right through to our senior team. And unfortunately, uh, one or two incidents, you know, can tarnish that image. And it's obviously, we're, we're very proud of our club and nobody would like to have an image that's undeserved. And that's, that's unfortunate, but it happens. The supporters of Young Munster are generally regarded as the best in the country. How does that come about? Well, that, 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 I suppose it's probably because of the area we're in. And in, in Limerick, you tend to support the club that's nearest to where you live. And we have a very big area around here. And if you're born the back of the monument, as they say, then you're, you're regarded as a young Munster supporter. And uh, they enjoy the day out. They come and enjoy the game and the, and the, the social aspects that go with that. And uh, they certainly enjoy the rugby. And uh, hopefully they'll be in here in their numbers today. And uh, it can be intimidating for us at times too because they're a very uh, expectant lot. They expect us to win every time and, you know, it, it can have its disadvantages having a big support. Young Munster's achievements are many, and one man for whom this is more than just a bald statement is Johnny Brennan, the ultimate Young Munster fan. He's turned a large part of his home into a shrine to the club, a home for many of Young Munster's sacred relics and a place to meet and reminisce. I used to collect them for all photographs, and uh, then uh, as team secretary for 17 years, I had a big interest in Young Munster. So photographs, photographs, so I said I'd build on a room just so I could go in and look down at my photographs. And then I think, when I was building it, someone said, uh, Johnny, what are you building? Are you building a museum? So I'm not building a museum. So I think from there, that moment they said about the museum, people heard about it all over Limerick, especially. And then guys or people said, Johnny, do you want my jersey? Would you like the jersey? And so that's what it basically started. 
if I recall it myself, and <clears throat> when we, we knew enough had to move from Catholic Institute because they put such a tariff, such a tariff on the grounds that we could not afford it. So some of you learned the gentlemen at the time decided to approach the people who own the property. And I think to yourself at times. Mr. O'Callaghan, was it at the time? Is it? O'Callaghan's. Mrs. O'Callaghan. Yeah, that's quite right. She was Baker. Mrs. Baker. And I remember that we moved across the road from Catholic Institute to where we are at the moment. And to me, it was, and to everyone else, of course, it was a big transformation in the club because things began to move, I felt, after that. Most of all lads like that played with the club, they would have come from the various, worked in the various factories, wouldn't they? It was uh, like Mahan's Timber and, and the mill and, and the railway. Matheson's it? was the best of all. Matheson's, yeah, there was a uh, Sherman. I remember Margaret and Matheson's, Margaret and Lysett. And Margaret was fired on Saturday. It's Friday night, and he went to Dunnock and Mary. And the next, then to, to Dunnock and said, I'm after being fired. And Mar Dunnock says, picked up the phone and says, you went to work Monday morning. And Margaret goes into matters with the Monday morning and the fellow says, I'm made glad to see you, see, half of them didn't turn into small business, see. And Margaret will work in another ten years. <laughs> Johnny Brennan's mother is another young Munster fanatic. And visiting the grave of Dana Hershehan, she has no doubts about the part played by the women of Limerick. One of the things Mrs Brennan people say about women in Limerick is that they know more about rugby than men in other towns. Now, would you be one of those? I am, I'm one of them. I wanted them. Did, did he be talking about I'm going to the club and did you know Robbie about the soccer one? I said, did he be talking about Robbie? And you've never seen him there. But I go to all the all the matches. All of them, every one of them has to go. But they, they, some of the people they didn't know they didn't know what a Robbie about it. Now, but we do. And we followed it all our life. And would now, it mean a lot to you when your months would win a match? Oh, I suppose. Saturday now when they went the week, I was on the radio and they said they were winning. And the next thing he came in there and said they would be it. I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> I was on the radio for a few minutes. I went to be, I'm gone then, I would be on the morning and they come in to tell me. It's pretty delicious. Because when I go to the club, they make a show of me. Uh, where was one such a day? Where was one? I was getting up and doing over, over the club from one such. And they were a great old team. What do you, you remember see? of the actual Batman Cup in 1928? What are your memories of that day? Oh, the great when we heard it. Because of all that, we, we couldn't believe it. Could, and with no phone at that time, to phone only people telling us, right, you know, people telling But my mother, oh, she said, have everything ready for it. was in the night. You should play Robbie in the bed in the night. You should have to go and shake him. Go on, get into him, get into him. <laughs> Mrs. Brennan was there too the day the young monster travelled to Dublin to take on St. Mary's in what was effectively the All Ireland League final in 1993. The Limerick Club took over Lansdowne Road that day and they did not go home empty handed. Just 15 minutes of the second half gone. That's the scoreline. And number 15, Aidan White, has a chance to level the scores for St. Mary's. The wind in the second half favouring St. Mary's. White's kick is not going to make it. And Jerry McNamara returns it but doesn't find touch. But a good catch by Torn. Intercepted. for support, Barry chases him, Nicky Barry can't stop him, he's there, Gary Earls has scored, brilliant for Young Monster. What an occasion, what a win. Tom Clifford Park was on tour in Dublin 4. 